So today we have Dr. Shannon Olson and uh, she's a reader in NCBS and she is a chemical ecologist. So what is very interesting about uh, Shannon's career is that she is a chemist and she did her PhD in neurobiology and uh, then she has a postdoctoral experience in ecology and evolution. So very interesting fields <laughs> and and what uh, so I just wanted to ask you what inspired you to connect all these fields which are distantly related and then pursue as a uh, um, pursue your career as a chemical ecologist at NCBS. Well I started starting out as a chemist I learned a lot about structures, uh, especially organic structures. I was specializing in organic chemistry and physical chemistry and I was learning a lot about synthesis and in my second year of university I came across a natural product actually and it happened to be a pheromone which mm -hmm. is a chemical used by animals to communicate with each other and I was very interested by the structure of the molecule being a chemist but I also was very interested in how that chemical could actually be used by the organism to interact with its environment mm -hmm. so then I started to think well how does the animal detect this molecule and of course that you get into biology mm -hmm. so once I left my uh, bachelor's degree, I w got very interested in this field, which we now call chemical ecology, because that's how chemicals are used to interact with between with animals, with each other, and also with their environment. And so that's what I did as my PhD. And I worked in neurobiology because I was very interested in how animals, in particular, are able to detect those molecules, and they use their brain or mm -hmm. their neurons, mm -hmm. and that's where neurobiology comes mm -hmm. from. And then I also got very much interested in how these chemicals are then used with the environment and also as these organisms evolve and that's where my postdoc in ecology and evolution came from so it's all very much connected it's still at the heart chemistry but it's much more how chemistry can be used by living organisms so what he made you to come to India because now it's been four years that you're working mm -hmm. as a reader in mm -hmm. NCBS and uh, how do you find the work culture and the environment and is it exciting <laughs> to work uh, in Indian environment with Indian scientists? So the field of chemical ecology, uh, it's, uh, not, it's not new in India. There actually have been people doing chemical ecology for many, many years. But officially as a formal field, it hasn't really been, uh, been uh, a very uh, large program. So uh, I'm working at NCBS in Bangalore, and some years ago there was the idea to promote chemical ecology as a field on the national level, and they had invited me to come and speak there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really, I just, I fell in love with with uh, NCBS. It's an amazing institute, um, amazing people there, lots of creativity. But even more so, I fell in love with India. I was able to travel. I went to the Western Ghats, and it's one of the most biodiverse regions in the world, as, as you know. And I saw so many animals and plants and birds and everything. And I, I realized that really this is the place I needed to come because I'm very interested in comparative work. So comparing different animals, comparing different plants to each other. And what better place in the world to do it than India, I think. so. Well said. But um, what I understand is chemical uh, ecology is like an emerging field. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you think uh, would be the contribution of chemical ecology in terms of drug research in India or uh, in, in internationally? What would be its contribution? Well, uh, from, from what I understand also at this, this meeting that I'm attending right now is a, a lot of drug discovery, at least from a natural products perspective, starts from, you know, traditional medicine, of course, historical accounts, uh, sometimes just by chance you happen to find something. And I think that what chemical ecology can offer is it can offer the, the inspiration and it can offer some direction to this research because... Of course, even though a plant may have a uh, drug derived from a plant may have anti-cancer properties, obviously the plant is not trying to cure cancer, right? Mm -hmm. The chemical is not there to cure cancer. The chemical is there to do some other business for the plant, either to help it defend itself or to help it to communicate with its environment, to help it get food, whatever it needs to do. So that's what chemical ecology does. It helps you understand that interaction. And I feel very strongly that by understanding that basic ecology, it can really broaden our 
our viewpoint by looking at what natural products are possible to make drugs, whereas instead of having to rely on, on accounts or historical, which there are many, and there's an amazing history of, of natural medicine here in India that we can derive from, but we can expand that even further by understanding the ecology of those plants and those microbes and those animals, and then that can even give us a greater scope for deriving new products. Yeah, well said, uh, Shannon. So we are actually, uh, you have rightly mentioned that it's important to go back to the nature and try to understand the fundamental uh, processes. And this would also help in contribution in drug discovery because we cannot keep on discovering new scaffolds and synthetic molecules. And um, I, I wish we have more chemical ecologists, you know, uh, who would be contributing in discovering natural products and their mode of mechanism. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, Shannon has very rightly mentioned that it's very important to connect different fields, chemistry, neurobiology, ecology and e evolution. And by going back to the nature, we would definitely find new answers to the existing uh, diseases as well as discover new molecules which are actually hidden in our natural products and uh, provide momentum to the current drug research.